Good morning, uh, dear friends, and welcome again to our Holy Week uh, online retreat. Uh, today is uh, Holy Thursday, and uh, we enter into the pinnacle or the highest festival of uh, the Catholic Christian uh, tradition, the Easter Triduum. Uh, we enter into the festival of festival, uh, the highest uh, point of our uh, faith, uh, which celebrates and remembers uh, what gave birth to Christianity. But before we uh, go enter into a reflection around uh, the Holy Thursday, let us just be silent again and uh, begin with a short meditation coming to the quiet and silence uh, for about two minutes. So invite you to close your eyes and just becoming aware of uh, your whole body, your head and, uh, and feel every part of your body. Uh, as much as you can and tell your whole body to reflex, uh, relax and, uh, and uh, take a deep breath in and you can repeat the word Maranatha. So we'll do that uh, our short meditation for two minutes.
the Lord be with you. Now before our reading today is from the Gospel of John chapter 13 verse 1 to 15. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon, is carried to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, uh, we begin our Easter Tridum uh, today with Holy Thursday. And uh, in the Easter Tridum, we celebrate these uh, great uh, rituals of, uh, and, uh, which begins with the Lord's Supper, Good Friday, and then Easter Vigil on Saturday night, and then Easter Sunday, and the Easter Triduum ends with evening prayer on Sunday. For us Christians, this is the, the pinnacle or the highest point of our faith, uh, because it is these events, the suffering, the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus that gave birth uh, to what is now the Christianity and the largest uh, religion in the world. Uh, and it began with the disciples of Jesus and the early Christians, especially the women. When the, it began with an experience, the experience that uh, the life of Jesus uh, his suffering and his death and now that he is risen has given them a new life has transformed them uh, so the resurrection is uh, is not only about the, the, the body of Jesus rising uh, and the empty tomb but it's also 
the, the risen spirit of Jesus now uh, living and filling the disciples with fire and with life and uh, energy and uh, sending them off on a mission. So for them, this is the resurrection, the risen Jesus in them, living in them, and now they are sent on a mission to continue what Jesus uh, had taught, lived for, what he suffered for, what he died for. And, uh, and so this is like the, the starting point of Christianity. But also important is the experience of the disciples and the women. If they did not tell the story of what happened uh, after the, the body of Jesus rose, that would have been the end of the, the story of Jesus. People could have just said, oh, somebody stole his body or somebody hid his body. But the fact that these disciples told the story, then the story of Jesus continues to be proclaimed and told and preached throughout the world till today, 2,000 years old, and what is now the largest or the biggest religion in the world. Now, the, the, the Easter Triduum is, uh, and the Holy Thursday is set on the backdrop of the Passover meal, which is to the, the Israelites and the Jews, this is the mark of their freedom, their freedom from uh, Egypt, from Pharaoh. Uh, it was this Passover meal that the angel instructed them to eat before their deliverance from, uh, from uh, slavery in Egypt that became like the moment for them, the moment of uh, freedom. And so they, every year they celebrate this Passover meal to remember, but it's a different kind of remembering in the minds of the, the, the Jewish people. It's not only remembering, but for them remembering is also to make present. And uh, the, this, this special kind of remembering is a theme that I've been uh, uh, referring to that uh, runs through the, the Easter Triduum and our Christian faith. So then for, for, the, for the disciples of Jesus, they then, for them the Passover becomes, has a new meaning. It's the passing over from death to life. Death caused by sin to eternal life that Jesus brings. And so for the, uh, the early Christians, the Passover, and then it later became the Eucharist, is celebrating their freedom from death caused by uh, sin. And now through Jesus, they have become alive and they hope for the eternal life that, uh, that Jesus promised them that uh, he will go and prepare a room for us in our fathers in the in, in the kingdom of heaven so for christians then uh, this passing over is the passing over over the, over sin and death and uh, and so the eucharist just like the, the the for the jews it's a remembering do this in memory of me and these are the words that jesus used on that last supper do this in memory of me so it's uh, this memory it's a different kind of memory. It's not only remembering something that happened 2,000 years ago, but the, the, the Greek word is anamnesis, which means that this will always happen. May this always happen. So what happens all the time? It's the, it's the, the saving act of Jesus, God's forgiving us our sins, God, uh, God giving us the grace to pass over sin and death that comes from sin to life. So 
When Jesus said, do this in memory of me, what he was actually saying is, no, may this always happen. Make this present all the time. L let it not end here. This is a symbol that you will follow and do it all the time. So what do we do it all the time? Is to make present what Jesus has done for us. And that is to free us from sin and to, to uh, free us from whatever enslaves us. So uh, this Eucharist then uh, that we celebrate on the Lord's Supper is not just like a, a reacting of the Lord's Supper. It remembers but we make present what Jesus did for us on that Last Supper. And so that is why John's Gospel puts two things together. The Last Supper or the meal, the Passover meal and the washing of the feet. To show that the Eucharist only becomes true Eucharist when it's followed by loving service for others. Because when we do, when we lay down our lives for others like Jesus, then our memory, our doing this in memory becomes true. Because we remember, we do what Jesus did, and that is the Last Supper, but we follow it up with acts of service. And that's why John's Gospel just does not uh, tell the story of the, the Last Supper. After the Last Supper, Jesus does an act of service, washing the feet. But this act of uh, service and hospi hospitality and welcome is only done by slaves, servants. So if you are the master of a house, when you come home, your slave does this to you. It, he washes your feet as a sign of humility and service to the master. But in this case, Jesus, who is the Lord and master of the disciples, he goes on his feet and he washes the disciples' feet, which is a reverse of what normally takes place. And you can imagine how short the disciples must have been. Our Master, our Lord is doing this. What's going on here? This is something new. So what Jesus is trying to teach here is that as disciples of Jesus, they are to do the same. You see what I have done? Now you too should do this. So two things John's Gospel puts together. The Last Supper, the Eucharist, and act of service and love. So in other words, uh, the Eucharist or the Mass must be followed by foot washing and that is act of service. So if we just go to Mass and we don't do any act of service and love, then it's half the Mass. It's not the fullness or it will uh, people can criticize or oh, you just you know you are just uh, uh, just doing ritual and not doing an act of service and so uh, some uh, theologians have uh, pointed this out that uh, you know uh, just let me pull out one of the theologians that talked about this he said that the Eucharist uh, Edward Skillebox is one of the well-known Catholic theologians. He says, Eucharist celebrates that which is achieved outside the church building and celebrates loving service of neighbor. So, and uh, other theologians like um, Gustavo Gutierrez, who is known as the father of liberation theology, he said, uh, Eucharist celebrates our participation in in the saving act of Jesus just as Jesus laid down his life and when we do that in our lives that becomes our offering that becomes our gift that we celebrate in mass so in other words our gift in the mass 
is our loving service that we show to others. Now, when we do, don't do any act of service, any, any act of love and come to Mass, it's like we come with no gift. It's like we go to an uh, songo and we never bring any gift, no mat, no tambua, you know. Nobody wants to show up to one songo with no uh, bringing nothing, with empty hands. Mass is the same thing. We don't come to Mass with empty hands. But we come with the loving service that we have offered during the week. And so that is why when I became bishop, one of the programs that uh, I introduced immediately is the Small Christian Community Bible Sharing, which invites us to break the word and also to break bread and break our blessing with other people. And so that when we come to Mass on Sunday, we are doing what we celebrate, and that is remembering what Jesus has done. And so that is why on Holy Thursday, these two important things, uh, symbols that we celebrate, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, and the washing of feet, because two things, the Eucharist and loving service make up one single symbol of our faith. And so as you go tonight for your Holy Thursday, remember this as you participate in the Eucharist. Remember to practice one act of loving service, not only during this week, but throughout our lives. And so let us pray. So in, in our prayer, we just uh, invite you just to close your eyes and uh, imagine uh, that uh, you are at the Lord's Supper and uh, the disciples are around you and you are there and uh, then you hear the voice of Jesus speak to you do this in memory of me what do these words bring to your mind can you trust him what does it feel like to trust Jesus with your life, your actions and your future? And become aware of your feelings and your emotions. Do this in memory of me and then bring all this. Talk to Jesus about it. Talk to Jesus about uh, your emotions and feelings. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.